Welcome to today's 3D print. Today we are going to build another Ender 2. This printer is so amazing that I bought two more. This is the second one, and the third one will be here Sunday. What's that? This is that cool little printer right there that's printing 29mm motor retention for me. I've already got everything taken out of the box. Everything is marked, so you don't have to worry about messing it up. This is just your baggie of tools, filament, SD card reader, etc. Your glue stick and your scraper, which we won't need for this build. Put them aside because I already have all the tools from when I built this last time. So I don't need those right now. These are some of the other centering rings that I made. Our motor retainers. Okay, I'm going to point the camera down here. So you guys can get a better view of what I'm doing. That looks good. Okay, I'm not even going to bother with the video. I pretty much know where everything goes, so I'm just going to do it. Alright, um, this is omnidirectional. The direction doesn't matter. Everything is marked. This is your um, your x-axis stepper motor and your extruder. The hot end is connected to and part of the main base. This is your carriage plate. This is your spool holder. Might as well throw that together real quick and get it out of the way. Everything is marked. Filament nut, oh, filament holder nut. It's very cool that they mark everything. Which way did I put it on that one? I did put, oh, I put it this way. Okay. Get that out of the way. Belts for X and Y. This is for the bed, so I'll put it with the bed. I'm going to need this now to assemble this. This is our X limit switch, which will go as part of the gantry. Y limit switch, which will go on the end of the bed. Your Z axis stepper, which will end up going right about there. Your X axis, which will end up going back here. I believe just like that. Yes. I believe it does go like that. Yep, it goes on this side. If I don't remember something, this will go on this side here. This is your idler. This is part of your X arm. Spare parts, which we won't need right now. Z limit switch, which I believe will go... Yeah, that goes right here. It's part of... Um... Um... Oh, I'm sorry, right on the end, I believe. Yes, this will go right on the end, right about there. It actually sits in this little opening there. Okay, let's get going. Show you how easy it is to put this together, even with just vague instructions. This and this. Let's see, is it this key here? Yes, it is. These are threaded. They are threaded on both ends, that's right. Thread that one in. Thread that one in. You want to make sure you scooch this thing over as far to the left as you can, as far away from the rest of the printer, because every little millimeter you get here will give you slightly more X access to print with. I got up to about 164 millimeters on mine. If I can manage to have my fingers hang on to these wrenches, you want to make sure these are pretty tight because this is your entire rigidity of your printing. This is like Z bracing. This is where all your rigidity comes from in the way these two pieces connect. Okay. Let me 
make sure that hammer nut actually turns. It doesn't do you any good if it don't turn. This, again, you want this one extra tight. Because, again, this holds all your printer together. Nothing is rigid if these aren't tight. Okay. That's the next size down. Yeah. Make sure those hammer nuts actually turn. If they don't turn, they're not doing their job. Now the Z limit switch, don't forget, give that a little slack and plug it in before you plug anything else, before you install it, because once you install it, it's going to be very hard to install that, that switch. Put it this way, have fun if you try to do that first. And this does give you some level of adjustment for your Z height, so if you need more, you can kind of adjust it a little bit via um, this bottom screw, because there is it's a slot, so you do have a little bit of play. Okay. I move these all the way to the back until the hammer nuts sit right at the edge of the um, extrusion. Why not? You got the room. Do it. limit switch goes on the other end right I believe it does it does it go on the inside no it goes on the other end
in. I've installed the Z motor, the Y motor, the Y limit switch, and the Z limit switch, the tower for the gantry, and the brace for the gantry. This is your Y belt. You slide it inside the extrusion. It goes around both the Y motor and the um, make sure that's printing. I think it'll be fine. Yeah, it'll be fine. Um, bed. The single nut goes on the inside. These pop in here, like so. Oh, I forgot. Yep, that's got to go in first. And then this attaches here, like so. go and this attaches here actually I just realized I want this to go further out That'll give me a little more access to my bed. The further in I go with the motor itself, since the limit switch is my limitation, the more of the bed I can print on. Interesting, so... I want to push that as far as it'll go, which would be those screws. Uh, this might not be able to tension that enough, because there's a limit to how far out I can pull this, which is that far right there. That is as far over as I can make it go and have it still work. Any further, it'll pop out of the extrusion. And now I will just tension it with the motor. Hammer nut turn? No, it did not. There it goes. Okay. Did that one turn? Yes, it did. That belt is plenty tight. Maybe too tight. Maybe not. We'll leave it for now. I can always loosen it. There is absolutely zero play in that Y-bed. Those V-rail wheels 
are just amazing how solidly they line up. I just love it. I'm going to do the bed last so I don't get in the way of it because I don't want to bend it. Okay. Now we have to finish. Can you guys see this? You got to finish assembling this. I'm not sure why they don't send this assembled. I mean, or at least put this post on. I mean, there's, I can't see a reason not to put this post on at the factory. I mean, you've already put the rest of them on. What's the difference? This is not lining up. Yeah, that is not quite lining up. Which means I will need to adjust it. Do that, just loosen these. There we go. It was cockeyed just a tiny bit, and I couldn't get this to thread in properly. Super easy to fix. Yep. Tight. 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 Okay. Bring you back up here again. Zero play. Absolutely zero wiggle and play. That's amazing. Never ceases to amaze me. as well make sure ones on the stepper are tight you're here tighten them up okay now don't forget on this rod the um the hole here is what faces the machine since it is what um, lines up with this bolt right here since this is flush on here there has to be a space for this bolt so they drilled that little hole there for that bolt to sit in so that this doesn't sit cockeyed. If you try to put it on any other way, you'll figure out real quick it's not going to work. I 
Oh, that's right. I forgot. You actually have to put that on first because the rod is in the way. Instead of taking rod out, I'm just going to spin it off. And you can see, you can go all the way up to here before the rod might risk leaving. That's 225 um, millimeters, not 200, 200. So you actually get a little more Z height than they tell you in the manual. And, and it would be stupid easy to just get a bigger one of these with a longer Z rod to make this printer even taller. And it's got the resolution that it might be worth doing. Okay. So there are holes on the back of this plate here so that you can reach through to the other, to the screws on this side of the plate. And otherwise you can't reach them. And these Allen keys are just long enough. You slide these bad boys on. Come on, stop playing with me. A little creep. Um, seriously, it just insists on turning. There it goes. Um, when you put it on here, you notice there's some play. Okay, make sure you slide it all the way to the right. That'll give you that extra millimeter or two of um, x-axis print volume. And why turn down extra print volume? Make sure that hammer nut turns just like that. size? Well, that's right. Huh. It barely fits that. Like it wants to strip it. And the hammer nut turned. That one's fine. There we go. Now we can put that on. <laughs> there we go. And it's in. Okay. Let's get this all wired up. Here's our Y-axis limit switch, our Z-axis connection, then our Y-axis connection goes here. I'm going to run the limit switch under, so I don't want it getting snagged up in the... Um, belt. This will be for the heat bed. Okay. Make sure the hot end is untangled. Try not to add any twists to it. Ah, zero play. Zero. I mean, it's, it's perfect. That really is incredible how precisely that sits on there so perfectly. I mean, I, there's no wiggle no jiggle, nothing. Absolutely amazing. Oh, wrong wrench. Go on. That one will do it. This has to 
thread onto here. I hate this kink that they have in here, but nothing you can do about it. Ooh. Do not over tighten this, it will very easily strip. As soon as that washer touches, stop. One more half turn. And touch. Stop. Alright, that works freely. You might want to grab one zip tie and attach this here like this. Get the motor sitting like that, or the wire sitting like that, and attach it. Okay. And now that'll actually sit off to the side and not be a problem. And that'll keep it out of your way so it doesn't tangle in the bed. Okay. This is already pre wired. You don't have to do anything to this. Then you have your altitude connections here the stuff that rises up and down with the printer. Okay. So this is extruder. Peel a little bit off as needed. This is your x axis. And this, a little tricky to get in there, but doable. Um, the, the clippy part goes forward. And it slides right in there. Done. And we still have to connect the belt. The belt's actually pretty easy. Um, this goes in here. Actually, it'd probably be easier to attach this side. Mm, it doesn't matter. It all goes in pretty easily. Inside the brass unit here. There we go. Up through the top. Where's my little pliers? There they are. I got big fat fingers. It's just easier for me to grab it. in the rail. Hey, don't come out of there. I didn't tell you to do that. Okay. This comes around and attaches to here, like that. Okay. So you see there, there's two slots cut into the metal here. Your belt goes into this slot. Around your stepper underneath the wheels that's important around into the second connection there and then that's when you install this this goes on here like that these go in here like that okay now, like I showed you before, tightening this is actually pretty easy. Take one of the wrenches, stick it in here, okay, and pull. Get that belt nice and tight, grip the frame, and then tighten your set screw, that's all. One of your screws, Oop. if you don't drop it like I do. I don't know what it is about my fingers and holding on to these damn wrenches, but it's a Serious pain. There we go. Plenty tight. Hmm. That might be too tight. Yeah, I don't like that. Too tight. 
I do is just put my finger here. I can let, I can control how much it comes in and then retighten it. Oh, that's because I'm powering the stepper. Duh. Steppers act as a generator if you spin them while they're powered, connected. All right, last step, heat bed. This part's a little bit of a pain in the butt because the one screw back here is behind where you're able to reach. See, two, two, one. Put that on there, put that on there. Feel until you're on the bed through the hole. It helps to slide it all the way forward. Spin that nut on. Just barely get the nut on there, because otherwise it'll make it more difficult to install the other two. This way you can still tip it up like this. Okay. Through the hole like that. Spin the nut on. Last one. Like that. Spin the nut on. You're going to pretty much tighten them all the way down. Fully compress the springs. And then you'll bring them up later. You're going to bring the nuts almost all the way up. And the, the screws will stick out of the nuts just a little bit. So... I already know about where level is, so I'm going to go right to that point. Assuming this one's anything like the other one. That's about right. If you build one, you'll, you'll get to know it. Okay. Fakey build tack. Easy peasy. Plug in the heat bed. Remember, get the heat bed underneath. Uh, no, I want the heat bed above the extruder connection, I think. Nope, below, above it. Yep. So, underneath. So that it rides on top. See here? You don't want it pushing on this. So make sure it's above the connections to your Y motor, but below the connection to your. Extruder and X axis. Hmm, gotta flip it over. This doesn't want to flip over. There we go. Okay. So, there we go. It does not hit anything. As you can see. And that's what we want. It's smooth action. Nothing's binding. Same thing here. Nothing's binding. This, you want to make sure it's out here. You don't want that getting wound up in the works. Might even want to zip tie these together to um, keep them out of the way. All right. The axis moves up and down, no problem. Last part, back to your filament bag. To the two screws to hold on our filament holder.
Ah, it's a full size one. Okay. Alrighty, I'm going to leave this exactly like it is, and I'm going to pause this video for just a moment so that I can go fill the SD card with my G-code files and grab a spool filament. Alrighty, G-code is loaded onto this SD card. Same files I have on that printer. It's going to print all the same stuff. And then... Esun PLA Pro, since it's going to be printing printer parts, or rocket parts, I want the stronger PLA. Esun PLA Pro is very strong. It's taped somewhere, here it is. through no problem. Okay. The printer is set up. Can you see that? There we go. Now we plug it in. And see if it blows up. Boom! Anybody jump? <laughs> Okay, might as well preheat. I'm reading both thermistors. And both are heating up. Okay. So prepare, auto home, X works, Y works, and Z works. We'll start off by spitting out a Marvin, since that only takes 20 minutes. filament and everything here so that when you do this you don't lose your stuff. You can visualize a lot of this. You can actually see the bed move and warp. You can actually look at it and see it. That should be just about perfect. Let's go to control motion. Oh, I can't actually make it move. Maybe prepare. Move axes. Here we go. Move 10 millimeters. Move X. Ooh. That's zero. Okay, can't go to one sixty. 
I'd have to put it at one millimeter to see how far I can actually go. That's there. You can actually spin these with your fingertips. You just touch your finger to it and you can rotate them. Okay. Let's move Y. That is just about perfect. Turn the wrong way. Huh. It's not going all the way to the edge of the bed. I wonder why. Did I do something different? I don't think I did. But I'm not getting as much of the print bed as I can on the other one. Let's check that. Let's go one millimeter. X. Yeah, it's stopping at 145. I wonder why. Oh. My... I got extra by flipping this around. If I go the other way on this, I can actually fit more. And this is not straight to the bed either. I can fix that too. Well, let's get this fixed first. I did not know that was a difference. I want my extra millimeters. If I go this way, what was happening is the, the cage was hitting this frame. right at the edge of the bed. Yep, 162 millimeters. You can just barely get 162 millimeters. Okay. That takes care of that. Now, let's straighten up this X-arm. Pretty sure that's just this down here. Yep. Now it's straight. Good at flinging Allen wrenches, huh? So by tweaking things, you can squeeze a little bit of extra print volume out of this booger. Let's go to Y. Okay. It's not going as far back as it should.
I'm only getting 130. What am I doing wrong? Oops. I unplugged the other printer. Ah! That means I canceled the print. Damn it. Well, now I can look at it. Yeah, it's the same. Oh! I have the limit switch. Up too high. Derp. <laughs> so it's hitting the wrong part of the printer to tell it that it's at zero. I might have to make up a set of instructions for this thing to make it easier to assemble. Boy, that explains a lot, doesn't it? go. Right at the edge of the bed is actually a little too much. So I got to move the limit switch in a little bit. There we go. Otherwise, zero takes it off the bed, which we don't want. Okay. Right on the edge of the bed. Hundred and fifty three. You can reliably go to 153 millimeters, so stick with 152. There we go. It's ready to go. Is the level still good? I think it's good enough to print a Marvin. Let's go to test. Marvin. This is pro, so we need to go higher temperature. 220. Esun's PLA Pro likes a hotter temperature. And of course, I ruined that print by unplugging the printer. Derp. Probably going to reset to a default. New centering ring. Yep. Tune nozzle T15. Come on. There we go. Light. I 
I didn't even put glue stick down. Oh, it's going to take a while to extrude. starting to come. There it goes. Yeah, it looks nice. I think I'm going to lift it a little higher. Marvin's printing. Let's turn up the speed. 200%. I hate waiting. Nice. I'm going to pause you guys for 19 minutes. That's all I'm going to take to print a Marvin. Here we go. We are just about at the end of Ender. Or, um, Marvin. As expected, without cooling, it's having trouble with the keychain holder, but it's otherwise perfect. Mm -hmm. There we go. Look at that. That's ridiculous. It, it looks like a 100 micron Marvin, but it's a 200 micron Marvin. This printer does such a good job. That's crazy. There you go. Another Ender's ready to go.